If you want to grow in your life, if you want to be a better, bigger version of yourself, become an entrepreneur because everything that you are afraid of will literally smack you in the face and you're going to have to deal with it. And then when you deal with it, each time you become stronger. I'm Amy Porterfield, ex-corporate girl turned CEO of a multi seven-figure business. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the budget, and the time to focus on growing my small but mighty business. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned, and you'll see the business I have today. One that changes lives and gives me more freedom than I ever thought possible. One that used to only exist as a daydream. I created the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step -step strategies to help you do the same. If you're an ambitious entrepreneur or one in the making who's looking to create a business that makes an impact and a life you love, you're in the right place, friend. Let's get started. Hey there, friend. Welcome back to Online Marketing Made Easy. I'm your host, Amy Porterfield. And today I'm going to share the powerful mindset shift that allowed me to push through the toughest challenges in my business over the last 15 years. And I'll be honest, this simple reframe is the opposite of what you usually hear in the online space. But I assure you, it will be a game changer for developing the resilience and the grit that you need to keep going when entrepreneurship, building a business gets hard. And by the way, before I share this, I feel like so many people building businesses need to hear this, but if they're not following this episode or this podcast, then they won't. So would you be so kind to grab the link to this specific episode and share it with an entrepreneurial friend that you think could really find it valuable as well? My goal is to get out in front of as many people who need these marketing and online business messages as possible. So for you to share my episode would mean the world to me. Okay, so the number one thing that has helped me persevere through all the bumps in the road is understanding this. Growing a business will be your biggest challenge and also your biggest reward. Ooh, even saying that to you now, I needed to hear it even where I am in my business today, this very moment, because sometimes things just feel hard, no matter how long you've been in business. So I'm going to say it one more time. Growing a business will be your biggest challenge and also your biggest reward. I assure you, what entrepreneurship can bring you is incredibly rewarding. And the payoff is 100% there. But navigating this journey, ooh. Not so easy, my friend. Growing a business takes grit and tenacity and strength and skill and an unwavering determination to keep pushing forward, even when the road gets rocky. I'm not going to get into particulars, but something just happened last week where I was notified of something that was just kind of really scary and just felt like, oh, I don't even want to be dealing with this. But that's business. Like I literally sat myself down and said to myself, you chose a freedom-filled lifestyle. You chose this business because you value freedom over security. Because you know that freedom gives you so many more opportunities to live a bigger life than security ever will. So the things that come at you that feel icky, that feel scary, that is part of the journey, my friend. This is me talking to myself last week, but I wanted to share it with you as well. And also one thing about business will be your biggest challenge building a business is that also risk. It's going to take a lot of risk. The more risk I feel like you're willing to take, probably the better within reason, right? That is scary. I ask myself, am I taking enough risks? And then the little voice in my head that protects me is like, no, we don't need to take any risks. Let's play small. Let's be more vanilla. Let's not put ourselves out there. Let's not say that because you're going to ruffle some feathers. Let me give you an example. I really wanted to get more into the, the conversation of Harrison Butker. I'm not going to go there right now. This is not the episode, but like what he said really challenged a lot of my messaging of helping women build businesses and make their own money, right? Like 
kind of everything he said really was the opposite of what I teach. But I was scared to get involved in the conversation because I knew it was so polarizing. And it kind of amazed me how many people, it was eye opening how many people supported it. And I just couldn't understand it. And I needed to have compassion for both sides. But I do think I hesitated to get more involved in the conversation because of the backlash. Like that's a risk that I still struggle to take to have a bigger voice around things I believe in because I don't want to make people mad or ruffle too many feathers or whatever it might be. So I'm still working on this journey of being a better risk taker, but I believe that that is part of the journey. That's the, it's a challenge building a business. I think the risk part for me is like one of the biggest challenges. So I'm in this with you, my friend, but I also, again, go back to the whole message of this episode, growing a business will be your biggest challenge and also your biggest reward. And I always say that if you want to grow as a human being, build your own business. If you want to grow in your life, If you want to be a better, bigger version of yourself, become an entrepreneur because everything that you are afraid of will literally smack you in the face and you're going to have to deal with it. And then when you deal with it, each time you become stronger. So I really do believe that. And here's what I want to say about this thing that growing a business is your biggest challenge. A lot of people will act as though entrepreneurship is easy. Just think about it. On social media, you see other people's biggest successes and their very best days, including mine. You'll see some of my greatest wins on social media. And it's easy to fall victim to that when you're getting started. Like, why is it so easy for everyone else, but not me? Or I thought this was supposed to be easy and it feels hard right now. What am I doing wrong? If you look around, you see other entrepreneurs building their email list, creating webinars, selling online, being successful, having huge social media followers. That's something new for me that I'm experiencing now 15 years in that if you're just starting out, it's like you're experiencing on day one. Back in the day, it was not normal to see people with like 3 million followers on Instagram or 8 million followers. Like that is way more common now than it was when I was just starting out. That can be very daunting when you have 1,000 followers on social media. So just that alone, how the landscape has changed, feels tough sometimes mentally. And it feels as though, and I felt this when I was just starting out, that everyone else had just like an advantage that I didn't have. And I spent way too much time feeling envious of other people's businesses and just a lot of time feeling bad about myself. That was definitely one of my challenges in the beginning more than anything. What I didn't understand at that time is that there was a lot that I wasn't seeing, right? I wasn't seeing that they had failed 10 times before this one thing took off. I wasn't seeing that they were probably spending more money than they were admitting that they were spending. I wasn't seeing the days that they didn't want to get out of bed because it felt really hard. We just tend not to want to show that side of ourselves, right? I think we're, as a society, are getting better. People with integrity, like you and me, I think we're getting better at sharing the hard stuff, but also you don't want to be a Debbie Downer on social media. So you don't want all your stuff to be like, today was hard. Today I cried. Sure, a little of that could go a long way, but we don't want that to be our whole feed. So we get why people share the wins, but we have to remember they're sharing the wins way more than they're sharing the hard times. So we can't let social media fool us, right? Because when we only know the back end of our businesses, but the front end of somebody else's, super not fair. It's not a comparison, not an even comparison. So be careful with that. Now, that being said, I wish someone had told me early on that entrepreneurship is really two steps forward, one step back. And how you view and manage that one step back is everything. So did you hear that part? So I believe that entrepreneurship is two steps forward, one step back, and how you manage your mindset around that one step back is everything. There's not one entrepreneur I admire who hasn't had major setbacks and imposter syndrome and doubts about whether they have what it takes. All of these feelings are normal, but I didn't know that when I was first starting out. I wish someone would have clued me in because I believe that normalizing the setbacks 
and the feelings that come along with it, if I knew that was very normal for others, I would have leveled up a whole lot faster. So speaking of the setbacks, without a doubt, you're going to have many of them in your journey as an entrepreneur. But what you make them mean will either make or break your success in your business. Let me give you an example. Say your launch completely tanks and you barely make any sales. You could let that mean that you're a failure who is not cut out to be an entrepreneur. Ouch. That negative meaning is only good good to breed just more negativity and self-doubt. It becomes literally a self-fulfilling prophecy of struggle. Or you could choose to see that failed launch as a learning experience. Let it hurt. Cry it out. Don't negate your emotions. You're going to have a lot of them. Feel those. But then you've got to think, what am I going to make this mean? Maybe it means that I don't have the right strategies and I'm going to go seek them out. I'm going to find the people that can help me do what I need to do. I'm going to study more, learn more. I'm going to just get into action more. I'm going to make more bigger, bolder decisions, but I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to get curious. I'm going to use this as data, not truth that I don't have what it takes. So I talked about this in another episode, but I love how my friend Jasmine Starr always says, okay, there's some data for you. This is data versus I look at it as truth that I'm a failure when things don't work out. So it's such a great little mindset shift. And it's taken me a long time to get here, but I think you can get there faster than me. So my advice to you is when you experience those setbacks, and you will, just be brutally honest with yourself about the story you're telling yourself. You need to ask yourself, is that negative meaning really true? But more so, I think the better question is, is this serving me? Oftentimes, I'll be like, this is what I'm thinking. Whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. It's not serving me. I need to look at this through a different lens. I need a different approach here. And sometimes that means I have to work with a coach. I have to talk to a good friend, another entrepreneurial friend, but I do need to work it out. I don't always get there instantly, but I will get there, meaning I'll get to a place that what I'm thinking is serving me to get to where I want to go. I just have to work on it a little harder sometimes versus other times. So just something to think about. Looking back, I wish I had invested more in understanding how to create a mindset to support my journey as much as I had invested in courses and strategies and coaching, because I've learned that your mindset is what will carry you through to the end above anything else. Like people with really great mindsets that are more resilient and more willing to take the hits and get back up are those that are going to be making more money than those that aren't willing to do that kind of work. They might have the best strategies ever, but they don't always pan out. There's going to be a point where one of those strategies due to timing, due to different circumstances won't work out. If you don't have the right mindset, you're not getting back up. So I'm going to put mindset over strategy any day of the week. I think both are important and we want both. And of course, you and I probably would rather focus on cool strategies than changing our mindset. I get it. I think we're a lot alike. But they're important. And I'm going to give a little bit more priority over managing your mindset than I am figuring out all the cool strategies that work just a little bit more. So something to think about. All right, my friend, I hope you found this valuable. I needed this episode just as much as you might have needed it. I needed these reminders. So thanks for coming on this little journey with me. And here's to your amazing success as an entrepreneur. I'll see you on Thursday for more entrepreneurial goodness. Bye for now. 